Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video, and also at a very weird time to talk about uh, Ishtar and Erish Coggle, which uh, Erish Coggle should be coming out tomorrow, and Erish should be out here already, so that's going to be today's video. I'm going to be talking about every single one of these that are in the 21 million downloads campaign, but I'm going to spread them out, because trying to talk about all of them at once <laughs> would result in a video much longer, and this way I can spend a little bit more time talking about the unit. But with that said, let's get right into it. So you can see here the um, Ishtar is first. Ishtar is actually up right now. I assume every. I actually got a couple people telling me like, "Yo, I got Ishtar! <laughs> Congratulations!" Um, uh, the only real difference between them, besides the fact that one has Ishtar, the other one has Erish Goggle. Um, the other big difference is that the Erish Ishtar one has Starry Night, but the other ones, the Erish Goggle has Bittersweet. And Flower Sunshine. But other than that, they are basically the same. So let's go in with Ishtar. Uh, that, not that it stopped people from already summoning for her because <laughs> it is Rin. But anyway, Ishtar. She's an archer. One quick, two arts, two busters. Four, it's four hits on quick, four hits on arts, one hit on buster, and seven hits on extra. Her active skills are Manifestation of Beauty B, increases the party's attack for three turns, increases the party's critical damage for three turns, 20%, 20% on uh, five cooldown. Uh, Gleaming Brilliant Crown A, 80% chance to ignore invincibility for one turn, 80% chance to grant self invincibility for one turn, charges on MP gauge, 50% on a cooldown of six. Her third skill is the Mana Burst Gems A+, 500% chance to grant self-delayed buff for one, for one turn, unstackable, increase on attack for one turn after one turn, 50% attack up on a cooldown of 3. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Independent Action A, Goddess Essence B. Uh, her third append skill is Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude. And her rank EX Noble Phantasm is the Angal Takigalse, which is the Mountain Range Shaking Firewood of Venus. Rank EX, Anti-Mountain. Hits 3 times. Deals damage is Buster. Deals damage to all enemies. Gain 20 crit stars. At MP level 1, it's 400% damage, and at MP level 5, it's 600%, and then she also increases her own uh, buster performance for one turn. This activates first, 20% to charge level 1, and at the final charge level, it is 60%, and that is Ishtar. Um, the easiest way to say it is that Ishtar is very good. She has a very um, base, simple kit, because she's a very early unit <laughs> from way back in the day. Um released a long ass time ago so you'll forgive her if her skills look a little bit outdated this one specifically is the only one that i would say if i don't think ishtar probably needs a buff overall because she's actually extremely good still now to this day but this ability probably could use a buff just to get rid of the 80 percent chance to ignore invincibility and to give invincibility to self for a single turn most units are able to give themselves these things without very much uh, problems, so I don't understand why her invincibility, which you really don't want to have a 20% chance to fail, um, has that. Um, but yeah, overall, she's uh, very solid. This ability here is very nice if you're going for... She's going to be very effective at killing entire mobs of enemies. Uh, if you are somehow in an event that is maybe a little bit more challenge focused, having the ability to gain 20 crit stars anytime you do a Noble Phantasm is very good, especially with Buster and Buster crits and all that. Uh, very solid unit. Very old unit, but still very good. Um, and also with Koyan Skaya, she works pretty funny because of Mana Burst. Uh, this can't stack, obviously, but if you use it, it activates, you gain 50% for the turn, and then you use Koyan Skaya to bring her down. This cooldown should be enough to go back to. Um, back down to where you can use it again <laughs> after two Koyan Skyas, and then you can have it there for the third turn, and it's pretty nice. And then you can finish it off with Oberon and her because she'll be giving herself 50% charge to her MP gauge and stuff like that, and finish it off with the Oberon special and all that. So, yeah, I think she's still a very good unit. Um, should you go summoning for her? It's too late for me to tell you anything. <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you. What you need to know here is that the, she is in fact Rin and she is in fact usable, so here for go for it. Nothing I would have said about saying anything about Tesla, Gilgamesh, or um, Napoleon would have changed anything about it, even though those are all solid options. And chances are, if you have one of them, you don't really need Ishtar. But at the same time, 
it's a unit that people really like of a person they really like of course they're gonna go summoning for it i'm not stupid <laughs> so it's it's very silly to kind of try and talk about one of these units and be like oh yeah objectively there's no objectiveness in this i know why people are summoning i just wish them the best of luck and <sighs> so on and so forth all right let's move on to erish goggle now because she's coming up pretty soon erish goggle not to be confused with Space Erish Goggle, we don't get to have that. We have Erish at home, which is the original Erish. <laughs> I wonder how many people are now more incentivized to summon on these banners because they see Space Erish Goggle on JP and they're like, well, damn, I'd like to have all the Rins actually in one place and go for them and are now more incentivized to summon. I don't think they planned this ahead, but it is very funny that two years ahead in time, they have Space Erish Goggle two years back. There was an entire explosion of ish of Rin type units with Space Erish, uh, Space Erish Goggle, Space Ishtar, regular Ishtar, and Erish Goggle. The only thing missing here is a uh, Summer uh, Ishtar, but I digress. Erish Goggle, she is a Lancer. Two Quicks, one Arts, two Buster. Four hits on Quick, six hits on Arts, one hit on Buster, and four hits on Extra. This eventually upgrades, but we don't have this yet. Uh, the Secret Great Crown A. Um, chance to grant self debuff immunity for one turn. Chance to grant self instant kill immunity for one turn. Chance to increase own buff removal resistance by 100% for one turn. Grant self invincibility for a single turn. So you can see now the invincibility, how power has changed. Is that when Air Chicago came out, it was okay to just give her self invincibility and have the percentage chance on the other three abilities. 80%, 80%, 80% for all three of the chances. And then obviously when she gets her buff, those go up straight up to 100% when they're at level 10. Uh, and she also reduces own skill cooldown by one, but that's after she gets her buff. Her second skill is the Mana Burst Cage A+, increases own buster performance for a single turn, and then charges on MP Gage. 50% uh, buster at level 10, 50% NP on a cooldown of six. And her third skill is the Blessing of Kerr EX. Grants self the Blessing of Curve buff for 3 turns, unstackable, increases the party's defense for 3 turns, increases the party's MP generation rate for 3 turns, and then increases the party's HP for 3 turns. 20%, 30%, and 3000. 20% uh, to defense, 30% to MP rate, 3000 HP, and the cooldown is 6 on this one. And the one note here is that Blessing of Curve enable additional effects from Irish Goggles MP, so you have to actually use the MP um, to, get the, 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 to get the Blessing. Magic Resistance D, a Territory Creation A+, and Goddess Essence B. Her third skill is an Anti-Assassin Attack Damage Aptitude. And her rank A, Noble Phantasm, is the Kur Kigal Irkala, the Bellows of Kur that trample upon a core. Rank A+, it's Buster, it's Anti-Mountain, hits five times. Deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage to enemies with the Earth attribute, and increases the attack of allies with the Blessing of Kerr buff by 20% for 3 turns, increases their critical attack chance resistance by 20% for 3 turns, and then grants them instant kill immunity for 3 turns. Uh, at MP level 1, the damage is 400%, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 600%, and then she has an increased own buster performance for a single turn. At uh, charge level 1, it is 10%, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 50%, and she also has a special costume outfit that is related to Lost Belt uh, 7, I believe, and I will not show that for now, because it might be considered a spoiler, but it is very good, and I like it. Very simple, but um, I like the design. So, Erish Goggle, before we talk about uh, the unit herself, I feel like it would be a good idea to pull up something so something that erish goggle has to deal with that space ishtar doesn't have to deal with um is that uh regular ishtar I, man i'm getting all these names fucking confused <laughs> the thing that regular ishtar doesn't have to deal with is the fact that there is no buster aoe archer that instantly outvalidates the other ones but there is one for lancer and that is melusain uh, Melusain, if you did not know, when she goes to her third stage, her is it actually an AoE Lancer, and she can do all this. Uh, and she's very good at dealing damage because, as you can see here, she is a modern unit with modern ass uh, abilities and is extremely good. And also has the ability to give herself 100% NP to switch into stage three, and then from then on, it's NP damage. So a very good unit. Um, so it's very hard for a lot of Lancers to compete. At least in my opinion, this is this goes beyond Buster. In general, most Lancers, once you have Melusain, have to compete in this. Um, 
with the idea of like, well, why would you use you over Melusane? And thankfully for Irish Goggle, I do feel like she has enough of that. I think in the original recording of this video, I was like, I don't think she does. And then as I was reviewing the video, I was going, what the fuck am I talking about? Yes, she does. So <laughs> I had to redo it. <laughs> Uh, because this is the because of this noble phantasm, it actually gives um, she can actually deal bonus damage to Earth attribute elements. So there's something there. But also she has the ability to grant the instant kill immunity, um, which can be big in a specific challenge quests where instant kill is a big factor into why it's a difficult quest. The thing that always pops into mind is like that one King Asan fight where there was just instant kill on instant kill on instant kill, and in general being able to give the party. Um, instant kill immunity is extremely good, but at least not only that, it also gives them a little bit more attack, gives them a critical check, attack chance resistance, so it can be very good in that kind of instance. And while Melusane is obviously still going to be better in attack stuff, that doesn't matter as much to me because now we have a unit that can actually do a little bit more in terms of something that can provide something to a team that she can't give like as good as Melusane is she could never give the party this so that automatically lets her stand out in a different way um which makes her be in a very good spot I think her and the other one is queerness also has an ability of where he has a very unique thing to him so therefore it's easier to say like well obviously I use him in this instance because he does something that Melusine can't do for me so that's what you would put him there and I think she has that and I also like that they're going to keep on buffing her and make this eventually 100% I think that's really good the ability to reduce on cooldowns also very good so I think in general Ishkogl is a very good Lancer unit and is worth having um though it's probably if you're someone who has Melusane and maybe you're more on the free to play side then you're gonna have to make the decision for yourself as to whether or not you can go for Irish Goggle whether or not anything that I just mentioned is worth it for you is a conversation that you have to have for yourself so now we'll get to the actual end part of this which is the part where I will save and discuss should you be summoning on this banner on these two banners at all and I'm gonna say that um it's tough because they're both good units, but you have to also realize that upcoming there's a lot of really good units. For example, Arjuna Altar is going to be coming some close to, somewhere close to the end of the month, um, and then throughout the entire year, which I'm go, go, I'm currently working on and trying to plan out a video saying all the units that are coming up fourth. It's going to take a while because I ran into some issues and some things. I had to re-record it. But one of the things I know for sure is that this year has a lot of good units in it. There's Koyanskaya, there's Castoria coming back, Morgan's coming back, Melusane's coming back, <laughs> Oberon is coming back. Uh, it's kind of insane. <laughs> Dolmen even comes back somewhere close to the end of the year, I believe. Um... I think it's him in there. Let me double check just to be sure. But I'm almost positive it is him in that banner. Because I want to say the ones that return are uh, Muramasa. Um, yeah, somewhere around here, I want to say. Nope, that's where Coin Sky comes back. <laughs> I think he's related to Lost Belt 6. Yep. Muramasa, Melusane, and Oberon. So you can see here, and that's going to be happening for us this year. So you need to plan accordingly. And I understand that these two are very well-liked and popular. That's the reason why I summoned for Erish Goggle. If you ever look back to one of my old summon videos, it was Erish Goggle, and it almost caused me to quit because I wanted Erish that badly. Um, I didn't do any uh, other summon videos until Scotty, and then I had to bring in my brother because the act of summoning solo on Fago was so bad after the things I had to deal with Farish Goggle, I never wanted to do it by myself ever again. Uh, and that's why my brother is on a lot of the summon videos, <laughs> if you ever were curious. It all came from that one moment. So, and I always went for her until I eventually got her. Like, I would even throw now with, like, the stash that I have, I know myself, I would have still thrown a multi to see if I could have gotten her. And the same is actually true for a lot of the units that I'll eventually talk about here. Like, I would feel the same way about Raiko, um, Abuki Doji, uh, Ishtar, Mysterious Highway, and Exalter, and not Amakasa Shiro, because he's not my kind of guy. Um... So with units like this, you have to be planning ahead of time, and you have to think, well, is there any one of any of the big units that I mentioned, Morgan or Oberon, um, Arjuna Alter, uh, Mel Melusane, Muramasa, uh, I already said Oberon, uh, Castoria, any of these big units that you're thinking for yourself, and then you have to look into the New Year's itself, where we have uh, uh, Cuckoo coming up, we have Tez coming up, we have uh, Kodamine showing up with Rasputin. 
We have Draco to still worry about in the future, and the Beast class itself can't be guaranteed on the GSSR. You see where I'm coming with this, especially if you're free to play. These are the times for the, the tough choices. <laughs> You have to look at Air Chicago and you have to look at Ishtar, and if you say you can spare a multi, then go for it. But in general, be wise with your spending is what I'm saying here. Uh, go for it if you think you can have a... Um, if, go for it if you have some stuff to spare, and uh, if you really do like them, I wish you the best of luck as you're going full horse, uh, full horse, full force with it and wish you the best of luck and i think that's about it for this video thank you very much for watching everyone i will be back uh with another video at some point i don't remember what it's gonna be it's gonna be something i swear <laughs> i have to plan out a lot of videos now um i have a lot of videos to plan out that's for sure uh that's it <laughs> until next time i'll see you guys later i wish you guys the best of luck and that god i hate recording at this specific time it's funnier that i feel like i'm slightly more active when i'm in the dead of night after work than when i'm like at 5 p.m but it is what it is i'll see you guys in the next video peace out